important property of FIR filters is that they can be designed to achieve exact linear phase. We're going to look at what that means for the FIR filter in this particular lecture. Recall that the frequency response of an FIR filter can be expressed as a weighted sum of the filter coefficients. So here we have the sum of the BKs, e to the minus jk omega, or since these coefficients BK are the same as the impulse response, we'll write this in terms of the impulse response as a sum from k equals zero to capital M h of k e to the minus jk omega and we'll be using the h of k form in the rest of the lecture. So linear phase, in a generalized sense, is defined as frequency response that can be expressed as a real function a of e to the j omega. So a can be positive or negative, but it's real. And then we have a phase factor that's a linear function of omega plus a constant beta. And this definition of general linear phase results in a system that has a constant group delay. The group delay, in this case, would be alpha. It would be the same for all frequency. Now there's four types of FIR filters with generalized linear phase. It turns out we can have M, the order of the filter, either be an even or an odd number. And then we can have either even or odd symmetry about the midpoint of H. And we'll look at those four cases here. Now the type 1 is a term that means an FIR filter with an even order M and also even symmetry about the midpoint. So that means that H of N is equal to H of M minus N on the entire interval. So if we graph this, we have the midpoint here, which is M over 2, and that falls on an index because M is an even number. And so this particular impulse response is symmetric about the point m over 2. And we can write out the frequency response and use the fact of symmetry to get a simpler expression. So here we have the sum from k equals 0 to m hk e to the minus jk omega. I'm going to factor out an e to the minus j capital M over 2 times omega and write out all the terms in this sum. But I'm going to group terms that have the same coefficient. So h of 0 is the same as h of m by symmetry, and we have e to the j m over 2 omega associated with h of 0, and e to the minus j m over 2 omega associated with h of m. Then h of 1 and h of m minus 1 have the same coefficient, and again we have e to the j m over 2 minus 1 times omega, and e to the minus j m over 2 minus 1 times omega. And we continue this process on out, and the last term that we have is the one that lies exactly in the middle, h of m over 2, and that's multiplied by e to the j0 omega. So I can group these terms and note that since these h of 0 and h of m are the same number, this is just 2 times a cosine. So I can write this as 2 times h0 cosine of m over 2 omega plus 2 times h1 cosine of m over 2 minus 1 omega, and so on. And then the last term we have, it's all by itself, it's h of m over 2. And this can be expressed as a weighted sum of cosines now that are harmonically related. The sum from k equals 0 to m over 2 of a k cosine omega k. We have a0 is h of m over 2, and then a sub l would be 2 times h of m over 2 minus l for l going from 1 to m over 2. So this is a simple form for the frequency response that leads some to insight into the nature of this particular filter. In fact, when we write it here again, we note that these ak's are real because we're assuming the impulse response is real valued, and these cosines are real, so this is a real function, and then we have a phase factor multiplied by that real function. So we can see that this particular type 1 FIR filter satisfies the generalized linear phase property with the real function a of e to the j omega being this sum of cosines. And then alpha, the slope or the group delay, is m over 2 for this particular FIR filter that satisfies m even and even symmetry about the midpoint. So considering the other cases now, a type 2 filter has m odd, but still retains even symmetry. 
So in this case, m over 2, which is the symmetry axis, is not on a sample. It's in between two samples, So because m is now odd. And it turns out if you go through a similar set of algebraic steps, you can write the frequency response as a sum of coefficients b of k from k equals 1 to m plus 1 over divided by 2 times cosine of omega of k minus 1 half. And in this case, b of k is 2 times h of m plus 1 divided by 2 minus k. So we're going to be combining each of these symmetry terms on each side of the m over 2. So this again satisfies the generalized linear phase property in the sense that we have a real valued function here, the sum of cosines times a linear phase term. So this system also has group delay of m over 2. Now interestingly, if we look at the cosine of omega k minus 1 half, these terms in the sum, if we look at that when omega is equal to pi, we find that this cosine is exactly 0 for all values of k. So it doesn't matter what integer k takes on, cosine of an odd multiple of pi over 2 is always going to be 0. Well, this tells us that at pi, the frequency response is exactly 0. So it doesn't matter what your coefficients are, this particular system, if you choose m odd and have even symmetry, you will always have zero frequency response at pi, which implies this particular system has a zero at z equals minus one, and you can't use a type two FIR filter to implement a high pass filter. It can only be used for low pass and band pass or any other filter that has zero gain at pi. Now the third case is a type 3 filter, and in this case we're back to having m even, but now we have odd symmetry about the midpoint. So if we look at a sketch here, we're going to have h of n is equal to negative h of m minus n, so we should have odd symmetry about this point m over 2. For that to be true, this particular impulse response has to be 0 at m over 2. So we've got the negative pairs on each side, and when we substitute this symmetry relationship into the expression for the frequency response, we find that it can be written in the form indicated here, that the frequency response of this sort of a system with m even, and there being this odd symmetry in the coefficients, is j times e to the minus j omega m over 2, and then a sum of real coefficients ck that are derived from the impulse response, times sine of omega k. So this is real, and then this is our linear phase term, so we're going to have group delay of m over 2, and j is a constant phase offset, which we could also write as e to the j pi over 2. Now this system also has restrictions on the types of frequency responses that it can synthesize, and that's evident by looking at the sine term in this expansion. First of all, sine of 0 times k is always 0, and so the frequency response at 0 is going to be 0. And then secondly, at pi, sine of pi times k is also always 0. So this particular system is going to have 0 response at frequency 0 and at pi, which implies that it has zeros at z equals plus and minus 1. So we can't build a low-pass or a high-pass filter with this kind of a system, it only can be used to build bandpass filters or some other filter where the gain is zero at both frequency zero and frequency pi. The fourth case has m odd and odd symmetry in the coefficients. So again, we have h of n is equal to negative h of m minus n, and we have our symmetry location here, m over 2, which is between two samples since m is odd and we have the odd symmetry with the coefficients above m over 2 being the negative of those below. Again, going through the algebra and exploiting the symmetry relationship, we can write the frequency response as j e to the minus j omega m over 2 times a sum over k d of k sine of omega k minus 1 half and in this case, the d's are again derived from the coefficients of the impulse response of the FIR filter. So here we also have a generalized linear phase system because this sum is a real valued quantity. And then we have the linear phase slope here with 
group delay of m over 2, and we have a constant phase offset of j, or e to the j pi over 2. Now this particular system also has some limitations in terms of its frequency response. It's fairly easy to see, of course, that when omega is equal to 0, sine of 0 times k minus a half is exactly 0 for all k, so this system is guaranteed to have 0 response at frequency 0. In other words, it has a 0 at z equals 1, and thus a type 4 FIR filter, which has an odd number of coefficients and odd symmetry about the midpoint, is not suitable for building low-pass filters. There's a couple more things we can say about these. Turns out that both the type 1 and 2 filters, which have even symmetry, satisfy h of z is equal to z to the minus m h of z inverse in terms of the system function, whereas the types 3 and 4 that have odd symmetry satisfy h of z is negative z to the minus m h of z inverse. And this implies that a 0 of h of z must also be a 0 of h of z inverse for z not equal to 1. So the zeros of these systems occur in conjugate reciprocal pairs for all zeros that are not on the magnitude of z equal 1. So I can give you some examples. I've got a type 1 FIR filter and it has order 20, so there's 20 zeros. And we see there are some zeros on the unit circle in this particular case, a couple over here, but those that are off the unit circle occur in conjugate reciprocal pairs. So I have one here at a radius of r, and I'm going to have another one at a radius 1 over r. And of course, I have the same for the uh, complex conjugate of those are also present. Then if I have zeros on the real axis, I have a distance r from the origin. I get 1 over r for the corresponding reciprocal zero. And of course, with an FIR filter, all the poles are going to be at the origin. So that's a type 1 filter. The type 3 filter I've shown here, and again we have some zeros in this example that are on the unit circle, and then there's zeros that are off the unit circle which occur in conjugate reciprocal pairs. If there's a zero at angle theta and radius r, then there will be a zero also at angle theta and radius 1 over r. Now the type 3 filter, recall, had zeros at z equals plus or minus 1, because we showed that the frequency response was exactly 0 at frequency 0 and pi. And indeed, you see those here. You see that the zeros at z equals plus and minus 1 also are in this example. So that's some of the properties of linear phase FIR filters. And it's useful to know those so that when you design them, you make appropriate choices regarding the order and symmetry, that condition that's going to be enforced.